What's up guys, Miles here with 9to5Mac, and today we've got the new 27 inch iMac in the building. And if you can look past the rather aged design, I think what you're gonna hear from a lot of people regarding this machine is that it's generally speaking the best value Mac machine you can buy right now. This is just such a complete desktop in so many ways, and yes, that's kind of the concept of all-in-one computers to begin with, but I think Apple really finally like perfected it uh, as far as specifications on this iMac. And I'm definitely gonna get into performance a bit later, but for now, let's talk about the standout features. You see that? You see that right there? That is pure flash storage. And yes, you've been able to option uh, flash storage in the iMac for a while now, but now it is the standard. Those disgusting fusion drives are no more. They're finally gone and this should have happened a long time ago. This iMac has the 256 gigabyte base model SSD drive and speeds averaged around uh, 1000 megabits per second write and 1500 megabits per second read, which is plenty fast for the average user or intermediate level video or photo editor. And you know, when thinking about it, it's kind of crazy to think that in 2020, we're calling an SSD a feature on an iMac, but is what it is. Next up, the improved speaker and microphone system. So as we reported in our previous video, the new iMac is getting the same studio quality upgrade treatment that we saw in the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro. Apple's implemented a dedicated audio controller uh, built into the T2 chip to help enhance the overall audio listening experience. And I gotta say, the minute I turned it on and put on a track, I could say I was immediately impressed. I can't say I can determine an actual difference between this model iMac and the previous generation iMac or the iMac Pro, but as I've said, this is gonna be plenty fine enough for the average consumer, and if you either can't or don't wanna get speakers, these will definitely suffice. They get sufficiently loud, and the lows and mids are incredibly well balanced and punchy as well for being in such a small chassis. As far as the iMac, I can definitely tell the difference between the microphone on this machine and let's say something like my MacBook Air. I'm thinking anyone who needs a higher quality mic than this probably already has that microphone. So anyone who just wants to use something solid for Zoom calls and stuff like that, this should be plenty fine. When this Mac was initially announced the other day, I said that the 1080p webcam wasn't really a big deal, and generally speaking, it isn't, right? But honestly, when testing it out, uh, I gotta say, this is the best webcam I've ever used. Uh, I put this up against my $200 Logitech 4K Brio webcam, and I must say, the Apple webcam built into the iMac had far better color reproduction, much better dynamic range. It's honestly crazy to see how badly the Logitech Brio compared to the iMac's webcam. So good job to Apple for not only giving us a 1080p webcam, but a webcam with a competent and capable sensor. Uh, this is essentially the same webcam that they implemented in the iMac Pro, but it's good to see it on this model as well. A huge new feature for the iMac and something that video editors really need to pay attention to is the addition of both the 5000 series AMD GPUs and the Apple T2 chip. This iMac model is rocking the four gigabyte AMD 5300 GPU. And while that's not a crazy high-end video card, these new 5000 series GPUs GPUs feature onboard hardware accelerated H.265 and VP9 video encoding and decoding. And like I said, with the addition of the T2 chip, H.265 video work is going to absolutely fly on these new iMacs. Uh, so if you're working with the new cameras like the EOS R, the A7S III from Sony, uh, the H.265 footage from those cameras is gonna be dealt with much better on these new iMacs than on the previous generation. So if you're one of those people who's looking into getting these cameras or already has the EOS R, R5 or Sony a7S III, you might want to look at what you're working with as far as hardware because these are going to offer serious, serious improvements as far as video exporting speeds over the previous generation and other Mac models. Uh, I have the i7 Mac Mini with a 5700 XT through an eGPU hooked up to it, uh, and this iMac has been blowing the Mac Mini away as far as general performance. The new 10th generation Intel CPUs are going to offer seriously noticeable uh, performance increases over the 9th and especially the eighth generation Intel processors. I'm only working with the six core i5 model here, but I've been using it for about a day or so now and performance has been absolutely great. And I gotta say for a lot of people, this base model processor is probably gonna be perfectly fine for the majority of tasks, even more hardcore stuff like light photo editing, video editing, some music production, things like that. When taking a look at Geekbench 5, the iMac here actually scored higher than my six core i7 Mac mini. And I also tested out Cinebench R20, 
2020 and outperform my Mac mini there as well. So if the performance on the base model is gonna be this good, then I think I'm gonna be in for a real treat with the 10 core 5500 XT model. So this is by no means a review. Jeff is going to take the reins as far as giving this base model the full review treatment. But I just wanna say from my perspective and my initial impressions after a day or so, I just wanna say a lot of people are upset that we didn't get the redesign that we wanted. I think we also deserved this redesign, uh, but we didn't get it. Um, but I will say don't sleep on this iMac because uh, performance has been really good. And this is just the base model. We haven't gotten in the higher end models yet, uh, but this is performing very, very well for video editing uh, and a lot of the stuff I normally do. This is a really nice Mac for the price. And like I said, probably the best value Mac you can buy right now. I honestly can't think of any major bottlenecks with this machine other than the design itself, which I mean, it's kind of subjective. One thing I will say is that I think it's time for the Mac Mini to go after messing with this base model. I don't think I want to use this base model machine as my daily driver, but just seeing how much better this base model is than nearly a fully specced out uh, i7 Mac Mini with the 5700 XT eGPU hooked up to it, uh, the performance is pretty much neck and neck, if not the iMac being a little bit better for most things. So. I think it's time for the Mac Mini to go, sad to say. But we'll just have to see what happens when we get that 10 core model in. But that's gonna pretty much be it for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below uh, with any videos you wanna see here on the channel regarding the new iMacs. If you wanna see it performance tested against a specific machine, leave a comment down below along with your general thoughts. But that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.